I've gained over 139,000 subscribers across four channels just by sharing random music and content ideas in my head. One of them's actually got a plaque. Two of them are monetized with a third one on the way. And so I really think I found a system that works. So if you've been struggling to build your music channel, I promise it's not your fault. Because the thing is free information on this topic is very difficult to come by. That's why today in this video, I'm going to teach you the method that took me over half a decade of blood, sweat, and tears to uncover. And I will show you how to do it without any of that gross stuff. So if you've got just one hour to spend per day working on this and a persistent attitude, then I promise you this is the exact guy you've been waiting on to blow up your channel going into next year. And as a bonus, I'll show you how to structure your channel so that you build an audience of people who actually want to engage with your music and products even before you've hit that YouTube monetization threshold. So let's get into it. So yes, homie, today I'm going to be showing you the YouTube success cheat codes. I'm going to be showing you exactly how to get subscribers on your music channel, and it will not be difficult as long as you follow this plan. Before I go any further, though, I think it's important for us to talk about the single biggest mistake that at least I see producers make when it comes to content creation. And so this is a mistake that I have observed, whether I am doing private consultation, one on one group mentorship or giving people instruction on YouTube like I'm doing in this video right now or in my Discord channel, for example, it is consistently the same issue. And I was able to discern this issue just in my own experience, because just like pretty much any other kind of creator, I just began any kind of music creator, right? I began by just posting my music because that seems very intuitive. So as a, you know, a beat producer, I just began by posting my beats. And this was consistently what I did for a very long time on the platform to what you could call a decent amount of success, honestly. It did work decently enough. I still remember this was probably the first beat where I made like multiple hundreds of dollars. There was a guy who bought it for like right around the time that Kanye had dropped Ye. And so he bought it for like a couple hundred dollars or like three hundred dollars or something like that. So the play was not not successful. And through this, I was able to build a decent clientele that was able to help me pay my rent in, in uh, grad school, actually, and stuff like that. So it wasn't that it wasn't working, but things really began to explode for me when I started to build my brand by posting content. So this was actually the very first content piece that I posted and right in between these. And you can kind of ignore these um, funny looking thumbnails that I have. There was a bit of a clown who convinced me at some point that I should have him design ubiquitous thumbnails for my entire channel. It was a really bad idea. So pro tip, don't do anything like that when don't let people, especially anything like that, don't do anything like that to your channel, but especially don't let people just take advantage and try to offer you just nonsense for the sake of it. I've had to learn and until this day, I still get people offering me nonsense that I really don't need. But that being said, it's kind of funny that my channel ended up being a time capsule that I can use to teach people things like that. But as you can see, in between two of these beats, which both got sales, and I think this beat still got like got me a sale like maybe last week or something like that, is this piece, which did considerably better and was really important for teaching me how to start building a brand and also getting me started in building that brand. And that was when I won the contest in Kyle's um, community. And then I just made a video about the beat. Basically, it's literally just a beat tutorial. If you go watch it, that's basically what it is. And again, going on onto the next tutorial that I ended up dropping, right? It's in between a beat that I kind of dropped is just a solo release and then a remix that I made, right? Flashback to when Drake and Kanye didn't hate each other nearly as much. But again, right in the middle is a content piece that ended up performing, you know, magnitudes better than the just the music, right? And again, that goes towards what I'm talking about in terms of building a brand in order to curate an audience of people that actually care about the music that I'm releasing. And again, just one more example with this 808 tutorial here. And the real thing with these videos is that comparatively, right? The content pieces will grow over time. It doesn't start off with 384,000 views. I think this video probably had less than a couple thousand views and within the first couple of days, months, even maybe by the end of the first month, it had like maybe 25,000, something like that. But over five years, it gets for nearly 400,000 views compared to things like beats, right? I only have a few beats that cross. I think I only have one beat that crossed the, you know, the 100. I have a few beats that have crossed the 100,000 view threshold, but I have like 
way more videos just in general that have crossed like the multiple tens of thousands and even into the hundred thousand views just from like straight content and i couldn't really give you like any explicit i could give you a bunch of like explicit like technical reasons but like this is just me being anecdotal and being like this is what worked in my own experience right so that's secret number one that i have for you in this video is to please take advantage of long form content especially because most musicians won't basically the only and i'm just going to be real with you as someone who like coaches major brands that make seven figures coaches artists and producers and engineers to like build businesses around their skill set basically nobody knows that they're supposed to do this unless they pay someone like me to tell them so please treat this like you just paid me a lot of money to tell you this because it's so important it might seem simple and it might seem intuitive but like really try to consider the fact that like very wealthy people probably someone wealthier than you has paid me to reveal this secret to them so please don't undersell yourself on how important this first secret is because nothing else i ever teach you on this channel basically will work very well unless you understand how important long form is and we can even extrapolate away from like youtube for a second i think long form is valuable no matter how you present it right it could be a blog it could be a newsletter it could be a podcast it could be an event that you throw in, in person anything that allows you to have those long conversations with your leads and your clients and be able to build rapport before you actually try to make them an offer is very very valuable it's just youtube is one of the most powerful and immediately leverageable tools at least in my experience so i will be spending the rest of this video now breaking down how to actually use it to develop your brand but to be clear i can only teach you what i know so i have to be explicit in telling you that the only way you will grow a meaningful following at least using the plans that i will lay out for you in this channel is with long form video content long form content in general as i'm sure you might know about my brand i do podcasting i do newsletters and blogging i think my blog gets like 50,000 hits a month a month which is kind of crazy when you think about it because a lot of people think blogging is dead same thing with newsletters and stuff like that but i've got like 14,000 people on my newsletter with consistent readership and stuff like that my entire brand is based around providing value through long form content and curate even an album is long form content but i have to curate how i present that and that's the entire thought process behind this so if someone else tells you something different like they give you different advice or you bring up my advice and they're like what that's terrible advice like what is he talking about by all means brother go with what they say instead i mean there's many different ways to do this as i say in every video but this is how i was able to grow my main channel that's how i was able to get a plaque on that channel so i can only talk about what i've done right this is how my mentee and my homie rob chilling gained a thousand subs in just about a year i literally watched bro go from under like maybe 50 subscribers to over a thousand and he executes on literally everything that i'm going to talk to you about this and he is just he's a killer with the beats he's a killer with the content creation it's like bro could do it in his sleep at this point it's very impressive i'm very proud of him this is also what I've done on this channel that you're currently watching right now. We can get into like kind of the essay kind of structure play that I use specifically for this channel on another day. But I think the important takeaway for using this as an example is that I was able to take this channel, which was essentially dead, revive it and get it monetized in under a month. So like just using what I'm going to teach you to to make it clear, like and I do drop beats on every single channel I have, but it's like I use content to increase my ability to present it at scale basically and to have it be very valuable at scale to the people who consume my music because i care more about my consumer more than just oh listen to my music because i make art like i also want you to enrich your life and care deeply about what i'm doing and that's a lot of what i try to communicate in my content and i'm even going on to building a third channel i mean this ch third channel again let me know if you want me to talk about my plug play i see a lot of streamers and gamers doing it I think musicians are slow to pick up on those kind of marketing trends that a lot of other creators do use. So I've seen it work pretty successfully on this channel so far. And I mean, this is just in the first 11 days of doing this, literally. I've only been doing this 11 days, 100 subscribers gained, 20,000, 21,000 views. That's like, like a 9,000% like a increase on what was happening on this channel because it used to just be a beats dump 
point being, and again, I still post, I still will post beats. The strategy for this will be a little bit different, but it's still going to get beats just like every other channel that I have. I'm going to make a fourth beats beat dump channel. And I have a third, a fourth channel for content, which we'll talk about another day, but the entire play is the same. Like I use the long form to build an audience that will actually genuinely care about my music because that's what every label does. That's what every signed artist does. And that's what every independent artist who actually knows what the fuck they're doing is doing. Right. So my lesson that I learned from all of this is that if you want to build a subscriber base of people who will actually fuck with your music, then you need to curate that audience with long form content. And again, using the various types of styles and platforms that we've talked about so far. So I would like to take this moment to just let you know I have a free drum kit. It's the 14 drum kit. It comes with sounds from all of my placements. I've been placed on CBS, BET, MTV. I have major placements all around the world. I am multi-platinum selling in South Africa. Check it out. You also get access to my newsletter where I give crazy, crazy gems. Basically everything that I give people in consultation and like paid mentorship and stuff like that. I reduce it down into like digestible bites of information and then I send it to your inbox and stuff like that just to help all the homies build. So if you're interested in something like that, definitely check out the first link in the description below. But getting back into it, what we know so far, just based off of what we've talked about, is that long form is king. No matter how you're going to present it, that's kind of like the key. It is the king. It is the play that we want to execute on. However, there's a bit more to the entire play than just, you know, getting up and being like, I'm going to post long form content. That's a good place to be mentally, but you need a little bit more than just that if you actually want to make it successful. So the thing that tripped me up with that was that I didn't know when to post the next thing. I was like, OK, I can make a competent piece of content, which was kind of predisposed by the fact that I spend a lot of my leisure time watching video essays about random topics. But like, I didn't really learn anything else about actually creating content. And I didn't realize until that point when I had that realization that I was stuck, that it's literally not talked about enough how important consistent posting is on YouTube, specifically for musicians. It again, if for some reason it's like musicians are very, I wouldn't say averse, but because we have such a good, like creative muscle, it's almost like anything that is like marketing advertising business sales or like copywriting is just kind of like there's no space in our brain to be able to process those types of things and to create the connections to like our creativity in a way that allows us to benefit from those things but they are very very important and one of those fundamental things that's very very important besides just posting content on youtube is like actually structuring and scheduling how you you know, engage with the platform, basically. So again, there are a million reasons why this is the case, but most of it just comes down to like what I could say in my own experience, which is just like, here's an anecdote about like what's worked for me. And here's an explanation for why I think it could work for you. And there are also statistical justifications in terms of like, I could pull up right reasons why it's important to post consistently on YouTube. I could pull up statistics like based on research people have done, or I could even pull up research from chat GPT. Like I have 4.0, so it could probably pull up some pretty robust statistics. I could even do case studies on my channel, channels in the niche or channels in general and stuff like that. And that could be fun. But I think that type of research would probably just be its own video in and of itself. So for right now, I think it's effective enough and useful enough. To, it's effective enough for me and useful enough for you for me to just give you what my head can an explanation as to why this is important. And it's because in my experience, I have run my YouTube channels like a TV channel. So I look at everything I drop for the most part as if it's a new something. Usually like if it's a long form video, it's like a new episode. Shorts was like new in terms of like how I started considering this strategy. So that would also kind of be like shorter mini shows, mini series. It could even be like, I don't really look at them as ads the way other people tend to do because I, I make video essays a lot. So I like to look at everything I make as kind of like a contained episode. So I almost look at it. I don't know if you've ever consumed like something like Family Guy, Rick and Morty or The Simpsons, but a lot of those like adult animation shows often will have like these like really short, like 
contained pieces that are like a minute or two minutes long rick and morty has particularly a lot of them and they're just like really self-contained ideas that aren't really related to anything happening in the show and that's kind of how i look at shorts as well and even like community posts on youtube i tend to look at that as like you know posting a little like piece of mail that's going to give someone some information or even like if it's a little bit longer like sending them a newspaper or something but i always look at it as if i'm curating and entertainment experience for the people who are consuming my content and that's really helped me structure it right i've had ongoing shows where like for example the mixing playlist or podcast is basically just an ongoing show where i talk about mixing you could look at it like a podcast like a video podcast basically or you could look at it like a series with like seasons in between and stuff like that but then there's also limited series like when i'm in a mode to cook up in a certain way or come up with ideas in a certain way in a certain strict schedule i'll do something like my daily series and that's what this is all about and this is really fun because you'll have everything that i'm kind of thinking about at the time and then you'll also have like crossover episodes there was like a very specific reason why i told kyle that i would be available during the time when i was doing dailies like i kind of planned this ahead at the beginning of the year just to let you know how i do think about content at least at this point in my career i didn't always think about it like this right it wasn't always like so finely structured but to let you know how much like i've found value in just structuring stuff over time in my career and stuff like that so but there's something else that you have to understand the only way i was actually able to figure this out was by posting consistently so like i'm going to tell you what i've learned but the only way i was able to figure out what worked was by posting consistently so and a piece of information that i could give you related to that is that after i give you the play you still need to actually post consistently to figure out what specifically works for you and then tweak it from there you will not make progress if you don't post consistently right if i just give you this plan it doesn't mean it's gonna work for you you actually still have to use it right that's like 80 that is the most important part of this you have to actually then take action and apply it you can't just be like i'm high off the dopamine of chew giving me the play please execute i would hate to be doing all this yap for you to not ever post the video ever like damn near i want you everyone who's watching this make me a promise that you're going to post and when you post come back to this video and tell me you post it and i will go watch it don't link it because you're not allowed to post links and comments like pay attention Nobody posts links and comments on YouTube in general, but like it will literally hide you from my channel. Don't do that because I want you to be able to comment. Tell me you posted your first video or you posted your first new video after using this play. I will literally go watch it. I will reply to your comment. I will go watch it. I will drop a like and I will subscribe to your channel. That's how serious I am. That's how fucking serious I am. So don't don't treat this like a joke. Now, going back to what I was talking about, in my experience, it was very sporadic, but I started getting good when I was figuring out what was working and then I moved that to posting consistently once per week. So my secret for you, secret number two that we're gonna talk about in this video is to post one long form per month. Why not once per week? Because once per week is fucking difficult. <laughs> it's, it's like the holy grail of posting consistently and successfully on YouTube is once per week, not every day, not every like, you know, you know, every hour, multiple times a day. Some channels work really well by doing that. Some channels work really well by breaking the mold. But what I've noticed is that like the holy grail for like really, really posting a lot of content consistently, like of like, like something you, uh, an idea you really put a lot of effort and thought into is like once a week. That literally requires you to ideate, script, edit, you know, put it together, think about how you're gonna promote it. That's a lot to do per week and pretty much you have to be at a high level to be able to do it that consistently. So my recommendation is to start with one per month. And we'll talk a little bit more about how you can really stay active on the platform, considering that you're only posting one long form per month. But that's my recommendation is to nail it with that first. And then when you get better at that, you can kind of change the frequency and adjust the play that I give you. So that being said, this is going to prevent you from experiencing burnout and it's going to give you time to develop good ideas worthy of actually testing, which gets back into what I was talking about just a moment ago. So instead of just rushing pieces of shit with 30 second half lives, right? Like really shitty shorts, really shitty community posts, useless long forms, like just cookups for the sake of it, which is not a bad thing, but like side note, kind of tangential cookups are a lot more successful 
kind of like the way beats are when people already care about what you're doing they'll be far more willing to just watch like your just straight gameplay basically which is what i consider cook up content to be the same way like gamers can do video essays about what they're doing but then also post straight gameplay content is very similar to the way you can do a very not necessarily an essay but a well put together piece versus like a scripted piece versus something that's just gameplay cook up type stuff right we're thinking about like very well put together pieces here because that's what's going to help you grow your audience like grow an engaged audience of people who really care what you're doing as opposed to just some random like cook up that if it ends up doing good at all it will have like a very short half-life unless you have a whale channel or unless you get very very lucky which if you do this correctly you'll end up with a whale channel which in the producer niche it's not hard to get you need like 5,000 subscribers to be considered a whale channel and then at that point you're going to increase your chances of getting lucky so those cookups will just do better in general so it's really really worth it to focus on trying to make one really good piece per month that being said you can take advantage of other features on youtube to remain active during that month so here's the play that i talked about in the last video so definitely go watch that video because these kind of go hand in hand in terms of like how you're going to be able to apply this play but i'll just give you kind of the breakdown in terms of content scheduling from that video right here post along with your long form that you're going to be posting once per month post one short per week so that would be four for the month right and this is very simple you could cut it from the long form which would be the very easiest easy the very easiest thing that you could do but you could also kind of like script them based on you know mini ideas throughout your long form piece the key to making it easier and also helping you improve at what you're actually learning and kind of like also focus your content approach is to base it off of what you're actually learning to make the long form piece and then the next thing you want to do is post one community post per day based on what you're learning and what you're doing in the shorts and what you're doing in the long form and then th this can also kind of just be like one-off post about like what you're doing in your music career like like literally just anything that's relatable right it's almost like posting tweets or like posting on threads and stuff like that which i've had a lot of fun with lately it's a really fun app and then the other thing is that you can still post beats on this channel i recommend that you do actually i would just say tailor the frequency again create a beats dump channel so that you're always at least taking advantage of the fact that you can get traffic on your beats but you don't want to not upload beats to this channel as well because that's going to be how you build that audience of people that like care about your music enough to listen to it on this channel so it's like they'll check out the long form right and then the beats will naturally get promoted to them because they've already watched the long form and then from there some percentage of those people will make the decision to fuck with your music and that's how you do that the key is to just like not overwhelm them with the music part of it because like just naturally the way you're setting up the channel the content is going to be what actually brings the most people in but the content is almost like trying to get people in the door of a mall and then your beats are like okay i've got a kiosk here for beats i've got a kiosk here for like my newsletter i've got a kiosk here for like free kits i've got another kiosk there for like sound kits right but the long form is kind of like hey we're doing an event here at the like the 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 courtyard in the mall at the mall like outside the mall or something check it out it's free to attend and then there's like stuff going on in the mall too there's free and paid stuff there's stuff for kids and stuff like that that's how you really want to look at it i kind of look at the entire content ecosystem that um at least musicians try to set up as a mall you want to get people around your mall in the first place and then you just want to set up kiosks so that when they come by it they the consumer is very intelligent don't treat the consumer like they're stupid if they're near your mall they will make a decision to buy something if they want to right if someone goes near a mall and they also need clothes from say macy's they'll just go to macy's right no one has to tell them that it's a very similar setup with this content approach that i teach so this structured approach will consistently grow your channel's weight and tenure, which are two of the most important stats for actually getting an account off the ground, which again, we talked about in that previous video. So please do go check that out. So as of so far, we have discussed what type of content you should make long form and how often you should post, which is one long form per month. And then you kind of create a breakdown gradient of other content that you can post on the platform throughout the month to kind of like curate engagement with your audience but then also just kind of like stay active with what you're actually doing but if you don't sit down to actually make the content it will not get made so there won't be anything for you to post consistently you definitely won't have the long form 
So then you probably won't have any shorts to post or you'll be trying to rush out shitty shorts for the sake of it. And then you definitely won't have any community posts to post because it won't be anything relevant because you're not learning anything relevant to make the long form. So you don't have anything worth posting about for the niche. I'm sure you could post random shit. You could complain about politics, but that's not going to help you grow your brand, right? This seems simple, right? Like you've got to post content so that you have content that people can watch. But this took me a while to actually grasp because I thought that the content would kind of just make itself like I kind of lost sight of the fact that like it took a lot of effort to make every content piece I made. I thought like, OK, like this should get easier, right? It should be like, you know, something should kind of click to where like I don't have to think as hard for ideas or I don't have to try as hard for editing or I don't have to care as much about the community if I want them to like engage with the stuff. But it's like, nope. All that means now is that you're just in it and you've got to like do it if you want to keep doing it consistently, especially with like newsletters and stuff like that, which is where like I've just like had a lot of fun and stuff like that. It's like you've got to like curate that value at a very high level. So the ideas do not just randomly flash in your head. You will have to sit and you will have to search for ideas. You will not sit. You can't sit. You have to go out and forage for ideas, basically. So there's no amount of sitting and waiting. There's no amount of just like like hoping inspiration that will strike you that is going to give you the content idea that's going to start growing your channel because I know that's the feeling that I had. So I know there's a lot of people that have that feeling. You might literally have this feeling of like, I've just got to wait for that, like perfect bit of inspiration to come. And then like, boom, like the channel's going to take off. I'm going to I'm going to get it. It's never going to come. It is never coming. It is. N you will live and you will you will exist for your entire life and then you will die and it will not come. I I forgot who said it. I think it was Sahil Bloom in a newsletter the other day. He said, life is in that dash. There's the date you were born and there's the date you die. And there's just a dash in the middle when they do your eulogy or they're talking about you at the weight keeping and they've got the little pamphlet. It's the year you were born and the year you die and the dash. What you your entire life is contained in that dash. If you sit around doing nothing, bro, in that dash. What a meaningless dash that would be, right? You want that dash to be filled with so much vibrant experience and and engagement with life that like you couldn't conceptualize it but the people that you've engaged with and the 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 groups that you've connected with and the individuals that you've served couldn't fathom how you were able to do so much with a very simple dash but like that profound revelation of your existence doesn't happen if you sit around waiting for something to kickstart it. You are the Kickstarter, so get kicking. You know what I'm saying? That being said, I did not get kicking for a while, right? All that philosophical waxing, right? I, it took me a while to get kicking and it is what it is, which is why I'm trying to explain this to you now. So hopefully the same thing doesn't happen to you where you never figure it out, right? Thankfully, I had many mentors that came along and taught it to me. So hopefully if this is something you're stuck on, I can I can help you get over it because I, I don't want any human beings that I can come across to not be able to get over that hump. So what I began to notice is that like I would never be able to come up with content ideas but then I would randomly get ideas about stuff to do in music by listening to music. I especially started noting this, noticing this around the time when Tyler dropped Igor. There was just like that was really when he kind of like came into his own as like the producer of his own music. Or at least that's what I think. And I was just like, bro, like this is insane. I've never heard this kind of style before and I want to emulate it so much. And then I was like, wait, but I can't do any of this. So I've got to go learn it. Right. So I've had this transcendental experience from music and it's created these ideas. So that's the experience, the inspiration, perhaps, that I was waiting for. And now it's forced me to go out and figure out how I can actually create that just in my own music. I'm not even thinking about, oh, this would make a great because a lot of people to be real with you, I'll just tell you the truth. A lot of people, they're waiting for who, such and such to drop an album so they can make such and such tutorial about such and such topic to do such and such thing. I think that could possibly be an effective strategy, but that's not necessarily how I look at it. 
And so we'll just continue to talk about this. And the thing is, when I hear something in music that I cannot do, I study it. And so with the way that I study, I tend to take just a butt ton of notes. So one day, then this was after like I had already been making music professionally and also then been using content creation to just grow my brand to help me like scale my music business and stuff like that. I randomly just decided. So I had already made good videos and stuff like this, but I wasn't doing this. I just decided, why don't I just take these notes? flip it a little bit and turn it into a script that explains what I was able to learn from like Tyler's production or Southside's production or something like that and just put it in my own terms so for the people who are like bro you just have this way of putting stuff that like no one else puts it that's pretty much because I'm just showing you my weird notes in my videos and stuff like this so what I've learned in creating content like this is that it helps it makes for better content but then it also helps me get better at the thing that I'm doing. It's almost like I'm making note cards based off what I've been learning to like reinforce my ability to recall like the skills that I've been practicing. And it's crazy because even though it's such a nerdy way to approach things, this is fundamentally the basis for my content strategy. Like I think I did about a month or so, maybe two months of like floundering once I figured out content creation. And then I was like, okay, Okay, like this is the way to do it to where you can do it consistently. And the reason I began to feel like that was because or the reason I was able to be very firm and confident in that understanding was because the skills actually helped me make better music, right? Like artists would buy more exclusives because my music was better. Like I was getting more placements because my music was better. I was getting more syncs because my music was better. The beats were getting more attention on beat stars and getting more plays on beat stars because they were better so fun and like people were asking me for more sound kits people were asking to collab more like i was getting offers like sync libraries were coming to me because of the the quality and the the sound design of my music so fundamentally it was valuable to me like what i was studying and the video i was making to help me kind of like culminate my learning was fundamentally helping me become a better producer and since it helped me solve an actual problem that I had, which was not being good enough to do the thing that I was able that I wanted to do at the time, I could be confident that this would help at least one more person who was similar to me, who bothered to stop by to watch my content. And again, that ended up being the entire basis for my content creation strategy up until this video that you're watching literally right now. I might not always be able to take the time to explain how that works for every video. In fact, I wouldn't because that wouldn't make the video valuable. That's not what makes the video valuable, right? It's the communication of the solution that does. But just to, and so today that just so happens to be that me communicating that is me actually communicating that to you, which is that that's what I do in my content. So the, the less confusing way to say that is by telling you what secret number three is. And it's that you only need to spend one hour per day working on your content. Now, how does any of that succinctly wrap up what we just talked about? Let me explain. If you study, you will never run out of content ideas. If you're exploring music, finding ideas that you want to replicate in your own sound and then studying how you can do that, you will never run out of content ideas. And this is based on something that I talk a lot about. Like I'm very firm in this because like I don't miss a day of practice. I literally live this. I don't miss a day of music. Like I will miss, you guys have seen my body. I don't know if you can see my body in the fucking camera right now, but like I'm not small and I work out a lot, but I will miss days of working out gladly. I'll miss a week of working out before I miss a day of not study of studying music. Like I get at least an hour, but like I, if, if I don't get at least 15 minutes, there's no way I won't sleep. I won't sleep. So, and that's just, that's why I don't run out of ideas for my music. That's why I don't run out of ideas for branding. That's why I don't run out of ideas for my clients. That's why I don't run out of beats to send to my seek licensing agents. That's why I have beats consistently to post on Spotify to people like thousands of listeners, monthly listeners per month. I hover around like between 3000 and 4000 consistently just because like I never run out of stuff to make and I never run out of ways to continue curating and promoting that. Even like my playlisting is me just consistently listening to studying and categorizing music. Like my playlist on Spotify is literally just me listening to music that I like and want to learn from. But, but like 
I get, I grow a following and get paid to playlist at the same time. So like now you're kind of starting to understand, like I also get paid to study. I get paid to get better at this. That's what like, this is such a benefit for you. And that's why like, if you do it correctly, you can't run out of content ideas. If you're getting better, you will not run out of ideas. I think it was Jim Rohn that said, you can have everything you want if you can become more than you are or something like that. Or he's like, you can have more than you've got if you can become more than you are or something like that or something like that. Basically, your ability to experience successful results is directly proportional to your ability to develop personally and like skill wise, if that makes sense. Comment below if it does not. But basically, a succinct way to wrap that particular section up would be to say that as long as you're hunting for your own solutions in your own musical journey, all you need to actually do is find an inspiring, entertaining and or educational way to present that idea to other people. And you will always have winning content. I promise you that's literally what everyone is doing on this platform, but especially anyone who's successfully creating content for their music and stuff like that. So as we've already touched, Structure can be one of your biggest allies when it comes to creating valuable content that's going to grow your audience. It's like it's the linchpin, honestly. So another key area that organization can actually help you with is the content ideation process. Again, we've been talking this entire last section was just content ideation, right? Because you need those ideas. Ideas are worth gold in this business, baby. Music, branding. Once you get into the whole like this whole space, bro, those I you understand that an idea is literally like a gold bar. You know what I'm saying? So you want to curate those and you want a good method for constantly foraging for those things. So that is actually necessarily a little bit outside the scope of this video, which is unfortunate. But if you want to learn how I consistently come up with banger content ideas and actually edit them for long form, short form newsletters or blog posts, please do check out this ideation content writing and content editing guide on my first channel. I think it will greatly enrich your life. I think it will bless you and it will get you one step closer to creating content that's going to help you blow up your brand. So I love you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.